This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys and seed. Cake Wallet is trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible by contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Joe Vazani and Jonathan Farrow of Lunar Crush, a social listening tool for crypto. They discuss what Lunar Crush is and where it is headed, what Monero's social stats look like, and advice they have for those that want to become more involved in growing Monero's social reach to a larger audience in the crypto space. Monero Talk starts now. All right, Jonathan, Joe, John, Joe, thanks for coming on, guys. So uh, I guess let's get right into it. Why don't you guys tell the audience a little thing or two about uh, it's Lunar Crush, right? That's, that's the name? Yes, sir. I discovered you just through on Twitter. I, I, I think you guys had posted some stats on Monero, some social stats on, uh, you know, how people were talking about Monero and it seemed like there was a, a positive trend there. And I delved a little bit deeper into what you guys do and it seemed really cool, but why don't you guys give a quick uh, overview explanation of what exactly it is? Sure. Yeah, no, I can, uh, I can give the, uh, you know, the roundabout, you know, Lunar Crush is a social listening tool for crypto. Um, and so what we do is we're looking at communication, social discourse across you know, things like Twitter and Reddit and YouTube and Medium and news. And we are pulling in over 2000 different cryptocurrencies. And we're what we're really trying to get after is what does the community look like for each of these projects? And we like to say, you know, without a community, there is no crypto. Um, and, you know, from the very beginning, when we kind of got into this marketplace and, you know, you find Bitcoin and then you find, you know, Ethereum and then you start finding all these other things that are out there. You know, you really you don't have a grasp really on you know, you're you're looking at different people that are posting stuff, but you don't have a real understanding of what that looks like over time, right? And is a community growing? Is there kind of a groundswell of a following that's happening? And, you know, is that indicative of, you know, a, a solid project, right? And so, you know, we really set out with the mission of creating transparency for investors. And so, you know, that was a couple of years ago now. And now, you know, we, we figured out we can pull all this data together and we can make it look nice and pretty and we can make it easy for, you know, our customers and users to find. And um, really what we've we've done is kind of created our own community of, of people that are coming to the site every day and looking for different projects and looking for, you know, what what's real and what's not. And, you know, we see all these different projects as just startups, you know, trying to figure it out. And, you know, in the future, everyone's, you know, basically going public from day one. And what does that look like? And how do they engage with their community? And so, um, yeah, social listening for crypto. It's very cool. How long has it been around? So we launched our first launch. It was uh, March 12th, 2000, uh, 2019 is when we launched. Um, and then, you know, really probably didn't start kind of coming onto the scene until like early 2020. Um, you know, we went through a couple of like, you know, tech accelerator and, you know, started to figure out the model a little bit. Um, and then, you know, I think like, the two weeks after COVID when, you know, we didn't know if the currency was going to be Monero or toilet paper, you know, at the beginning there was really, we started kind of really launching off. And uh, so it's been about two years now. And before you guys launched the app, you were just kind of doing this behind the scenes and providing this data to, to people upon request. How, how did that work? How'd you guys evolve into creating the app itself? We started by trading. I, I mean, trading back starting, you know, it's funny, Monero is one of those ones that I found way early on too. Like I had a My Monero wallet way back in the day and the web, the web-based version, I didn't even know what I was doing. Um, it was great. It was really, really great. Um, discovered, uh, since we're talking Monero today, I'll pick on Monero, found Monero on social media. And what is this? How do I get it? I mean, early days, it was hard to even store it. And um, like kept finding projects on social. And, you know, you're following a few people on your feed that day, but you don't actually relatively understand um, where are we? Is this more, are there, are there more posts about Monero today than yesterday? How does this historically stack up? How's the sentiment? Um, how much of this is spam versus a bot versus, you know, versus a human? Um, 
And so on our own, it was almost like we were experiencing it as a trader firsthand and then trying to solve it for ourselves, um, trying to say, can we collect all of Twitter for all coins that we, we care about? Uh, and that's actually really what started. And then we built it for ourselves, really. Um, it wasn't to give out to people. It wasn't even a company. Um, this was an experiment a amongst four, fr uh, four friends, really, who said, is this going to work? And then it did. And then, um, you know, we were working in many other spaces. I mean, we both, Joe and I worked together in, in advertising, big, big ad agency working with big, you know, Super Bowl level kind of clients. Um, and then I, I went to work for an AI software company and I ran, ran user experience over there. And then Joe kept trying to get me to quit, to join uh, the Techstars Accelerator, said no, said no. And then I said, ah, screw it, let's go. Um, and then we, we launched right, right around then. Um, and that's been, that's been fun ever since, but we did not do this before, um, you know, before, I guess, uh, two years ago. It's very cool. It's very well designed. Do you guys want to go into, take a deep dive here and go into what exactly it is you look at and how you come up with these, um, essentially these, these indicators and these metrics? Sure. I mean, I could I could start, John, and you can kind of just hop, hop I mean, in wherever. Great if you could use Monero sure. as, as the uh, kind of the yeah, user. for sure, for sure. So we're you know as people are out there talking about Monero, you know, across places like Reddit and Twitter and any sort of like news article that's written about Monero, um, you know, what our system is doing is going out there and looking for that. You know, it's looking for mentions or keywords, upvotes, likes, retweets, all of those things. Um, and so as we pull all that data in, you know, we're also starting to score some of that data, right? We're looking for things like spam, you know, we're looking for people who might be more influential, right? And, and how many followers does that person have? Do they get real engagement? You know, is this spam, right? And so we've got machine learning that looks at and is trained to, you know, accurately identify spam for the cryptocurrency market specifically. Um, and so as these indicators, like a social volume comes in, which is like, unique mentions of Monero or cash tag Monero across these places. Um, we just memorialize that at all times. We're just sucking in this data, looking at it, analyzing it, and then it kind of gets presented on our coin detail page for Monero, which is matched against, you know, its market volume, its price, um, its pairings, which exchanges is it on. Um, and so we're giving people a, a more detailed view of the project in and of itself besides just looking at price and throwing some, you know, lines on charts and technical analysis that's out there. We're giving people a good feel for, you know, what does the community and social look like? And then, you know, how many individual contributors are there, you know, for Monero and, you know, not just the volume of that, but what's the engagement? Is there any virality that comes when, you know, people post stuff and that's kind of, you know, for us helping people, really kind of see in the marketplace if there's if there is something kind of crazy happening at one moment and is it happening in real time and you know john and i talk a lot about news you know and he's been you've been hot on this lately of like no one else is not many places are out there talking about the rest of the market right monero i think gets a little bit of a coverage here and there from like you know some of the larger publications that you might see but you know it's, it's definitely not on cnbc right and so um, for us, it's there's this huge subset of people out there that deserve the same quality of information and analysis across the rest of the market because, you know, as kind of like hardcore cryptocurrency advocates, you know, we think it's like the democratization of opportunity for people to be participating in this. And so for us, it's, you know, showing people social and activity and who are the influential people. You know, right now it's it's just for Twitter for influencers. Um, but we're we're helping people, you know, look at who gets the most engagement, who has a quality following, who's not doing a bunch of giveaways and things like that. So we're helping them kind of understand a little bit more about, you know, the Monero project, the community in of itself at their first glance. Yeah, I mean, I think people would say, at least in, in the Monero land, um, that, you know, Monero, I think, doesn't really have a very strong marketing arm because it's such an organic truly open source project as opposed to some other coins that, you know, maybe have uh, a centralized funding source that they're using. Um, so is, do you guys see that a little bit? Is Monero a little bit of an outlier there when you're looking at that? Uh, is that something that your algorithms pick up on? Because like there's no, um, 
you know, there's no army. You, you got your your Monero people out there that are talking it up, but there's no kind of like paid for army that's out there promoting Monero per se, which I think you do see with some of these other coins, some of these other projects. Uh, do you think that's kind of filtered out in the way you guys measure measure these things? Is that picked up on? You know, what's really interesting about that is you guys have this, you know, I'll, I'll go and like, I'll talk like macro for a minute here. Like when you, when you look at Bitcoin, it moves on macro narratives and it doesn't move on the latest commit of code necessarily, unless it's something major, which I mean, it, Bitcoin's meant to not move quickly in a sense, right? So when you talk about these big macro narratives like privacy and Monero is deeply attached to that narrative, when that comes up um, in a macro way, um, it hits Monero. Um, it also hits coins like Zcash, right? Like when privacy comes up, it's a big thing. And and it's it's actually interesting to see like when privacy becomes a big concern, um, Monero tends to get more traction from a social perspective. And so when you look at that, I think that's very different than a lot of the smaller um, altcoins that are just in a sense trying to prove themselves um in a sense trying to stand for something um you know there's there's coins saying oh yeah we're building this nft platform over here and it's going to be huge there's this other one saying we're doing DeFi, but privacy is is extraordinarily difficult when you think about that and that's a that's like one of those big narratives that something like a bitcoin latches onto something like a monero latches onto but very very few coins can um, and so I think that's, that's a pretty interesting way to look at it when you think of like, who's talking and when, um, when, so when privacy is a big thing, uh, you're, you're going to see different types of accounts, um, and users have a bit more influence than maybe other times. Um, and I actually have heard even on CNBC, I have heard Monero mentioned before, but it's like a passing comment. It's not like there's a report on Monero. Um, it, it's just something that someone on might say if, if privacy is in the news right so uh it, it's an interesting thing i'd actually love for us to even do more like work on that like when is privacy a big topic and then see how monero performs that's actually pretty fun do you guys break it down can it be sorted to look like to view all pri privacy coins is that is that you know that's that's actually <laughs> so it's it's possible and it's something we're working on doing more of um i mean like right now you can you can slice by like say DeFi coins or stable coins and privacy is definitely another element because our, our view, um, I know I said the word altcoin earlier, but I hate it. I can't stand that term um, because the market's too specialized at this point. It's no fair to say it's Bitcoin and altcoins. That's absolutely crazy. Um, there's these specialized focuses that these various projects have. And, and we're actually going to be doing a lot more around that um, to let you do exactly what you just said um, and understand like, if we're talking privacy, um, how do all the, what are all those projects? How do they stack up versus each other? What does the community look like across all of these? And be able to to understand that because it's it's incredibly important. Um, there can't just be even one solution for anything either. Things work together, um, so it, it's really kind of um, something that we're going to be doing more about in the future. Just to kind of tag on to that question with you know, do we see um, you know, social volume and, and how does that look on Monero, you know, compared to potentially maybe a project that's, you know, come out in the last six months that is attached to the DeFi narrative and like may or may not, you know, have the name of a food inside of their name. Um, like Monero has a, a very nice kind of sloping, gradual upwards, like community that you can tell looking at like a year of data on our, on our platform. And so if you're comparing something like Monero on our tool to something else, we have a compare tool, you know, that will be like an investor or someone that's interested or trying to figure out, you know, what's going on in the market. When they look at Monero against another project like that, you know, they will very clear, clearly see that, you know, there's this massive upslope in social volume for a project, you know, versus Monero that's got this kind of like steady community growth over time. And that's, you know, that's a decision that someone would make on their own, whether or not they would invest in one of those two projects and where they're kind of, you know, incentive lies based on what, what, however their thesis is about investing. But, you know, it's very clear, you know, that, you know, if, if a lot of, you know, cryptocurrencies go away and there's a DeFi crash and everything else, like Monero seems to have a solid community that would help, would hold it up. 
Are you guys planning on add? Is it, are you sticking with social? Or are you planning on adding other things like, um, you know, other, there's obviously other things to look at. So you get, you know, you got the price. You have uh, you guys are looking at the so, the social interaction, which is obviously very important for all those reasons we're talking about. If people aren't talking about the coin, then it's probably not being widely adopted. Uh, but then you have other things like development, like how many people are actively working on the project, how many commits you're seeing. Uh, you know, transaction volume. Are you guys going to be adding stats like that as well? You're really sticking with the social components. I mean, we, uh, we, ex we explore a lot of different things out there, but I would say like when you, when you look at correlations, that's what we're, we're looking at. And I'd say if we, if we saw that there was a deep immediate correlation between development activity um, and price and trading, um, that it, you know, we're not canceling out adding that kind of information, but I think there's so much more on social that we want to do. Um, I mean, I could, I, if I could tell you that that Monero development activity correlated to either day trading, swing trading, or long term holding, um, I'd be confident in saying yes, this makes sense. But uh, what I can tell you is that the social activity does extremely correlate to trading activity. It, and um, I want to use, I know we're talking Monero, I'll use Dogecoin as an example because it's on everyone's tongue these days. Um, Dogecoin correlated at a five out of five for days in the past month. Like every hour we look at how does social and market activity correlate to each other mm. and perfect score hour after hour after hour, day after day and proving purely social move. Social activity started to kind of fall a little bit. I wouldn't say it crashed, but it sort of kind of like waned as Elon and Gene Simmons and Snoop Dogg stopped tweeting so much about it. And price literally followed the same trajectory. And so if I told you that Dogecoin did a bunch of commits during that time, who cares? <laughs> Honestly, like great, but it didn't correlate to the price if it did. Um, you know, and uh, I, I'd say like it's good macro kind of background secondary data, but it doesn't really like, if we're concerned about like price and correlation, um, I mean, I'm curious to see all of that on the various coins. How does the development activity correlate to the price? Um, but social is it, social has a lot more correlation. Um, in fact, Monero, when I'm looking even over the last year, um, it, it's anywhere between like a, like a three and a half to a, a four and a half, kind of in that range, three to four ish. Um, meaning it's out of five. So it's much more correlated than not. Um, and and that, that social activity is increasing. So as that social activity increases and it becomes even more frequent, which is what we're seeing, um, you're gonna have even more correlation with the price as the community grows and starts to frequently talk about it. And if it's organic, that's the key. No one's paid for a campaign, it's organic. Um, you start to see those correlations get tighter and increase. So social is definitely our focus for now. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, certainly not discounting social. I, I mean, I, th I think that's, uh, you know, the, the easiest way to kind of look at things. I think looking at things, you know, looking at developments and stuff, uh, yeah, just, just a different way and a, and a different metric. Uh, I think it's, you know, equally, if not more important in some in some ways uh and i think that's why like you'd see criticism of, of dogecoin right so like people are talking about it it's being pumped you know elon musk is talking about it but you know are there developers working on it that's kind of like the main sure. criticism of dogecoin right so um you know so it's not it probably doesn't correlate directly with price but long term it's you know showing uh, the direction that the project is moving in. If, if, if you don't have a lot of really smart people dedicating their time to building it, then that means it's probably not going to be a valuable tool in the future. It's kind of like, the, you know, obviously Bitcoin has, has more development uh, than any other coin. You know, Ethereum is number two. Uh, and then Monero is actually number three. But, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of ranking um, of market caps, it's, you know, like number 18 right now or number 20. So I think an investor would look at that and be like, wait a minute, why is this, does that mean it's potentially undervalued? Um, but yeah, let's, let's stick with the social, obviously. That's what you guys know best. So Dogecoin probably, that is that probably the, the, 
the coin more than any other right now that's correlating very well with social versus price? Are there any others that are, I guess Bitcoin, obviously, I would think is very well correlated in terms of price and social. I mean, in some sense, they, they all do to a degree or not. Um, I'd say something like if you if you want to talk about something that's like, you know, hitting above their weight on on social, it's chain link. Um, when you look at the percentage of of share, we call it social dominance. When you look at the social dominance that they have relative to market cap, the social dominance is extraordinarily high compared to market cap dominance. So it, it completely is out of whack. Um, and that's that's kind of what we look at there. We we look at like so if we if we had like a mental pie chart, who has the biggest slices of the social pie chart, and then look at that relative to what is the pie chart on market cap and so if we see that like okay now let's go deeper now let's see the trend over time how much has social increased over time and not just a day not just a campaign not just a a, a big development release but over time constantly consistently have things generally trended higher um and that's ch so chain a good example monero's doing really great um right now just to give that example um, and we're seeing social activity go up and, and not just act, like when we say activity, another big thing to look at there is the number of people posting, not just the number of posts and not just necessarily the engagement, but is the individuals posting every day increasing or is it decreasing? And um, we see it, in fact, if I, I'm gonna go back to pulling up Monero. Just you guys so wanna share the, the screen? Number. You guys can share the screen, it's pretty easy on the lower left. Uh, sure. Let me try and figure that one out. Lower left. Ah, OK. And I'll load this up. Yes. Let me make this bigger. Hide my Photoshop in the background. Um, so when we look at, say, Monero, I'm just going to look at like social volume. So we see that social volume, so over the last three months, 123% increase. Uh, part of that is a 53% increase in social mentions. So every time someone posts, and they're talking about Monero, um, we're capturing that. And so you see these spikes over, over time here that are going up, but overall versus the three months prior, it's up 53%. The engagements within there is also up 52.6% over that time. But when we look at the contributors, the number of individuals that are actually doing those posts, so like I'll just go back three months ago, 227 people, today it's 584, but it's gone as high as 4312. So the community itself, the number of people posting lots of posts is accelerating. And so that's that's like a real big sign of a healthy community. Um, when you see that, when you see it broadening out, because every one of those people, you could say if someone's to the point of uh, tweeting, doing YouTube posts, going on Reddit, writing a Medium article, et cetera, et cetera, if they're doing all of that, um, they're more than likely past the point of saying, Hey, I should set up a Monero wallet. Hey, I should buy some Monero. Um, this gets into liquidity. This gets into number of wallets. This gets into people in the community excited about it, vested. And so you want to see the community size grow. You don't want to see it shrink. Just to pause on that for a moment, this is why a lot of early investors that are just getting into this space, which by the way, that that the number of total individuals getting into crypto has tripled in the last month, tripled. So we're seeing 300% increase in the number of individuals. And so across all of crypto. And so when we like break that down and look at those individuals and then kind of go further and say, well, who's actually the most influential in all of these? And we objectively look at really three main factors um, that create influence. In fact, I'll just pop this open. We look at engagement. So these individuals posting, when they post, how much engagement are they getting on those posts? How many comments, how many retweets, et cetera, are they getting? How active are they? That's the second thing. Um, so how often are they posting? Is it like one post and they're done? Um, or is it constantly they're, they're doing this? And then we look at their popularity relative to all the other individuals posting. So, so I guess you could say like out of all these individuals posting over the last three months, in fact, let me just pop this open here. We can call out those individuals here. Um, and so we, we look at, you know, Cake Wallet has had the most engagement, the most activity, and the best following. Um, we see that Pepe the Goat, love it. Pepe the Goat is number two, 
Adam Hodel, VC Metal pays me to crypto, change now, tell me mustache, Joel Osowitz, crypto macho, um, bubble bobble 123, fluffy pony, there you go. Um, and so those would be like the top 10. And you know, some of the fun things we do there, like we create like sharing mechanisms on the site where people can like hit share and tweet it out and it and it tags all of them. So you can actually see that and it tags all of them here. You could even download the image and, and tweet that out if you wanted to. Um, and so there's all sorts of fun things we do. Um, but but yeah, I mean, that's that's largely, uh, that's what we do. Um, is there any other data you'd wanna, wanna check out on the site for uh, Monero? Yeah, um yeah you had some of the oh, hold on. john maybe check out the six month real quick on the contributors so this is kind of what i was explaining earlier a little bit as you can see you know the the kind of sloping upwardness of kind of the contributors and there's some spikes there which means that maybe something was kind of going viral that day but sustaining kind of this like higher low of people that are out there talking about Onero that are, you know, obviously like interested in it, maybe asking questions, maybe commenting. Um, so that's what we're talking about with the community and looking at this over time. You know, if, if it was two years ago and you're out on Twitter and you're looking in there and you're there on, I don't know what day that was, maybe like February 10th, you know, you might think that, you know, Monero has the largest community ever because it's going crazy for those two days, right? But, you know, looking at that over a year it changes that you know, changes the perspective on, on the way you're thinking about the community of each project. How about it's, this? It's also, good, go ahead. Yeah, no, finish your thought, go ahead. Uh, well, I mean, it's also like, when you look at like the market cap, Monero is a huge project, right? $4.92 billion. And so it, it's like, if I, do, if I showed you some of the, the very early stage, like projects that are just launching now with a much smaller market cap, you see these like, you see the ones that are immediately successful versus the ones that are not. And, um, you know, that's kind of easier to manipulate and move because, because if something has like a, a $40 million market cap and it goes to 120, um, it, it's a very different kind of an investor, um, that's looking to, to swing trade those things or even day trade, um, versus someone that's establishing like a longer term position and a core holding like a Monero that has 4.92 billion in market cap. And so I think that's. When we, when we think of it, like it's less about a swing trade and a, and a long-term accumulate, keep adding to that position over time. That's when I think this data is also extremely valuable. So when you, when you look at like, like, let's put it this way. If you've been investing in Monero since, you know, 2016 or something like that, and all you do is add, you, you really want to know that the community is expanding. If you see, if you see that, like, if we were looking at this day to day and saying, "Gosh, the community is shrinking," um, this core holding of mine, and we see this on some coins. I'm not going to mention which ones, but we see some very, very large coins that we see the community shrinking with multi-billion-dollar market caps. Hmm. That's scary, because if you've got this huge ecosystem built on it, and you see that the community cares less and less about you, that's a that's not necessarily something that you want to be in for a long-term position. Um, that's actually much scarier than like the, the swing trade and the day trade on a small cap. Um, so I think it's something to really to really look at for core holdings for sure over time. Very good points there. Well, how about this this Galaxy score and the alt rank? What do you guys want to go over? I'm going to go to a week on that one. Let's look at the weekly. Joe, I'll let you explain that Galaxy score. I'll take alt rank. Sure. Yeah. So we, you know, as we started pulling in social data, you know, we thought it would be pretty cool if we could somehow kind of create a little bit of a signal for what that social data would look like, but not just purely social data. And so what we did is we kind of intermingled social data with market volume, you know, with sentiment, and then we, we correlate all of those things. Um, so Galaxy Score is really looking at a a project's performance against itself over time, um, as far as all of those factors go. And so we're scoring that in real time. So as soon as we get data in, we're running the analysis at all times. And, you know, there's, there's, you know, people out there that have said, oh, you know, we're going to do some research on this project and we're going to give this project a, a plus through an F minus, kind of like the, you know, traditional stock markets would, 
would do. And it's just, that's just too slow for crypto and crypto moves, you know, instantaneously at the speed of social discourse. And so for us, it was, you know, let's just score this every single second over time. And then let's memorialize that score and give people a little bit of an idea of how, you know, what's happening at this moment across all of those, you know, sentiment, social price, and then cor correlating them together. Um, and so it's a, you know, coins performance against itself with regards to all of the social and price indicators. And so this is pretty bullish, 72 is good. What would give it uh, the highest score possible just so for better understanding of how the- Pro Like probably like a like Dogecoin price performance, social activity, market volume, all moving up together at the exact same time, all correlated um, you know, together would, would really push it. Um, so you know, Galaxy score is a little bit more of like a kind of caution, advanced traders only. Um, you know, it's, it's used a little bit more like algorithmically for, with people, you know, that are, are kind of tied into APIs and then John can talk through alt rank, which is, you know, my, my favorite part of the site and what I use every day. So yeah, alt, alt rank, think of it like it's looking at combined activity. So, uh, market activity, so price and volume mar market performance, uh, and social activity and, uh, if you look at like an investor's trading strategy, a lot of times they're trying to earn more Bitcoin, for example. So what we also throw in there is when I say market performance, um, the coin needs to be outperforming Bitcoin from a market perspective. So if, if you're if you're trading and losing your Bitcoin, um, that's a problem. Um, and so w what we're doing is we're looking at Bitcoin beating market performance and combined social activity. You get some really, really interesting um, results. Um, a lot of times, so another example here is it's an inverse rank. Number one is the best and number like 2000 would be the worst. And in fact, rather than showing you this, I could tell you like over the last little bit here, it's looking at all these things, but I'll show you the coins page here and you can just see which ones are performing um, the best right now. So I'm going to go alt rank. In fact, I'm going to go all coins. Uh, come on. So we can see here, it's because I'm on DeFi, let's fix that. Here we go. So we can see today that like all of these coins, this is sorted by alt rank right now, this whole coins table. So we see Binance, Ravencoin, PancakeSwap, which has been unbelievable the last few days, Ren, Chili's, Dodo, Venus. And you know, if I just, for example, pulled up Binance coin, which has the number one, and, and this changes constantly in real time, but you can see, um, this this was moving up, or I should say, this was improving. So we had a we had an all rank of 152 when price was 130. It dropped all the way down to number two. Still, price is only 140, and then it stays low. This wasn't dropping because of price performance. This was dropping because social was really that strong. So you could say it's it's kind of funny because we get a lot of comments of, well, yeah, of course, social activity rises when price goes up. Or, or does it? Because social activity rose here a lot before price moved up. And also like, we're, like something's going on with it's ob Obviously this is getting stronger. Price even fell here. And so we're seeing something that fell a lot and then the price went crazy. So it's not always just like, hey, price went up 50% and all of a sudden everyone talks about that. There's stuff going on. Hey, we should be excited because there's this going on you know, Binance smart chain, et cetera. And I'm not gonna talk a lot about Binance, but that's just a good example, a case study of like, like social activity, something's going on, pay attention, FYI. This isn't, this doesn't mean buy sell, this means pay attention. And so when we look at that over time, you know, if you were to see, obviously right now, this is something interesting because Monero has fallen from 243 to 37. We've seen price go up a bit. So the price has gone from 261 to 276. We have a really good day, good week, 35%. That's a huge return. It's like a multi-year return in the stock market for most. And if you look at if you look at like that, that this drop here, this is not purely due to price performance. And so what ends up happening is you end up having these opportunities that are led by social. And a lot of times they're ahead of time. Um, so it's definitely something to pay attention to. So in, in that example, just so, so would you say, so social is, is indicating what at this point in, in your mind regarding Monero? 
It could be anything. I, I, the event specifically could be anything, right? Uh, it, it's indicating that the community is buzzing. The community is talking more and more. What's going on? And you don't, and, think, and like, you don't think that necessarily has to do with the fact that the price is just rising at this moment? You think there's it could just be an indicator of, of a future rise? If I told if I showed you this right here when it went from 281 to 34, mm -hmm. between this moment here, price didn't do very much. Mm -hmm. And then it went up here and it actually got even better. But it's sort of like it's sort of just like a is the community going? What is what is going on? I should definitely be paying attention. Um, and so again, like over time, um, if I showed you Dogecoin the week that that happened, uh, it went from like 300 to like one. And that was before price moved. Before price moved entirely. And it's it stayed one the whole time for like two, two, three weeks ago there. So um, and then and then as the social activity fell apart before price did, um, then price started to fall. So it, it's just definitely something to pay attention to. And I also add, we have alerts for this kind of stuff. So like if I, if you wanted to go in here and add an alert um, for Monero, you know, you could do that. You could say, um, send me an alert on Telegram or SMS. And um, when alt rank falls to less than five, let me know, because I may miss that. And then I can tell you all the times that I'm gonna get alerted. Some of these are gonna over alert me, but that's fine. I'm just gonna add the alert. Now I've got an alert for Monero, and now I'm going to get alerted when that happens. Um, and then you'll actually see that in here on the site, there'd be a little bubble saying when that happened. Um, and you'd be alerted. There's also a global notifications for alerts here that we have set up on here. So so that's something we actually are just launching now too, by the way. We're, we're just getting alerts out there. Um, right, cool. So you don't have to go and scour all these metrics to actually come to you with what's important to you. And most of the social data is coming from... Twitter or Reddit or where, where's the, the lion's share of data coming from? So um, we, we collect from Twitter, uh, Reddit, Medium, YouTube, and hundreds of news websites. We actually have the largest collection of crypto news out there. Um, and that's because of how we collect it. Um, if news ever gets shared on any channel, um, we, we pick up and spider that link and know what coins it's about and know what like who it's from and all of that stuff. And we're going to do a lot more with that. Um, but uh, we look at all of that, that those different sources, um, but Twitter ends up accounting for, um, as you said, the lion's share of that activity. Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with even things like Clubhouse as an example. I was um, going to ask you about that. Go ahead. Yeah. Like cl Clubhouse is a closed environment, um, but, how often do you see people posting on Twitter about it? Pretty often. And so um, that's something like we, we can pick up and tell you how many Clubhouse posts there's that there have been. Um, we're gonna do more around that. Also, if anything ever gets posted that, that goes to Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest or whatever, uh, we can capture all that stuff, we do. Um, and uh, over time, we're gonna add more sources to the mix, but um, it is kind of interesting just with how Twitter, I should say how crypto works, most things end up on Twitter. It's all happening on Twitter. Um, no matter which way we slice it and say, there's this next greatest channel over here, it still ends up on Twitter in some way. Are you guys thinking about, or I'm sure I'm sure you are, are you, are, are you figuring out how to better pull data from Clubhouse? Obviously, I guess they have their, their terms of service over there, but it would be great. I, I assume you guys would love to be able to glean more data from that. You know, how many different clubs are talking about different coins, the amount of people that are in those rooms, the people that are in those rooms, uh, how big of social following they have. Is that something you guys are looking into? Uh, for, for sure, uh, over time. Uh, a lot of that requires different types of, um, like we have to get into machine learning to do an AI to do transcription and sentiment analysis and what are they talking about on those clubs versus just reading the title of the, of the, the, of the club. Mm -hmm. um, and who's in it and what kind of tags are in their profiles. Like there's a lot of depth to it. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, for now we're just seeing if someone posted on Twitter, but, um, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to do more. We're going to look at a lot of other channels. So if you don't mind me asking, what, what are your favorite coins? I would just be, I would love to know. I mean, you guys seem, uh, to be most concerned and makes perfect sense with the, the social elements of a coin. Uh, I'm wondering if that 
affects the coins that actually are your favorite? Yeah, I mean, it definitely does. I think all the projects that, you know, I end up kind of following a little bit more in depth, you know, I picked up somewhere along the line from Lunar Crush, you know, so it's, it's fun to engage with projects that have interesting and fun communities. You know, it's kind of, I feel like crypto is kind of born out of the same, you know, thread as like the gaming community almost. And, you know, it's fun. Like, I think Monero has like the number one, you know, meme, like, you know, creator on the, on the planet, Jack Black is whack, man. That guy is the number one meme creator on earth. Um, and he's almost every single meme I see from him is uh, Monero. So it's just, it's fun, you know, and I, I love following it. And so, you know, it's like Chainlink and their frogs. I mean, how can, in Pepe, how can you not, you know, see that and have fun with it? So I think it's, it's definitely impacted, you know, the communities and the people that we follow, you know, we have a live stream ourselves and we end up, you know, bringing, you know, projects on and, you know, it doesn't, we're not always just trying to get the, next biggest huge thing on the, the live stream we bring anyone on right and it's it's to give people and showcase for people you know everyone that's like busting their ass and trying to build in this community because you know it's important are there particular projects that you guys uh, love are you guys <laughs> maximalist at heart are you i mean i your... think i think everyone should be a bitcoin maximalist at heart if you're in the space it's kind of like everything relies on on bitcoin in in a way um, at least right now it does. Um, but I don't want to pick, I don't want to pick any names out there, but you know, I could say, I could I'm definitely say Monero's, Monero's on my list. Business you're in, I, I understand you guys have to be. <laughs> we love it. We awesome. love everyone. Just so you're going to get attacked by Jack up. Black on Telegram. He's going to be <laughs> like memeing you like crazy now. It's going to be fun. Uh, um, yeah. Like uh, Monero is great. Like really, right, really answer. excited about Monero. Honestly, I really do. I, I've liked Monero. I don't even remember since when, 2015, 2016. I was in Cancun on vacation, sitting on the beach, reading about Monero one day, going, wow, this sounds really cool. <laughs> like, I, I, I thought back in the day it was really cool. And then I thought my Monero wallet was really cool. That was, I mean, I'm talking way back. Um, but I, I, I think for, for me right now, um, what what's really interesting is, uh, We've now crypto's growing up, like crypto's growing up, and there's a, there's actual utility being made right now. Um, it's not 2017 again, where we're in this hype bubble that's baseless and everything is coming soon. Prom we promise, but let's do an ICO and raise a billion dollars anyways. Um, we promise we're just gonna we're gonna execute like crazy. Just trust us. Just trust us. There's nothing there, and so now, I think um, as things have been built as DeFi is taken off, as NFTs are taking off, we're now seeing that these core chains like Ethereum are overburdened and uh, slow and gas fees are high, but they're only overburdened and slow and gas fees are high because a lot of people are using it. And so uh, I'm, I'm interested in anything that's solving that challenge or not, it's not about replacing Ethereum, love Ethereum, it's about making it better so it's about cooperatively working with them and solving uh, user problems. And of course, there's different levels of decentralization around it. Like you don't have to look any further than Binance Smart Chain um, over the last like month. Um, I believe that they're processing more transactions in Ethereum now. You might argue that that's more centralized, right? Maybe too centralized, right? Um, but you can't argue with the fees are really low with the things that are getting built on it. Um, you can't argue with Polkadot. Um, the, the ecosystem being built around Polkadot is enormous. I don't think we've seen that since Ethereum. Um, like I can't say that about anything else. Like it's crazy. Um, but they're 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 a great example of like it's not about being arrogant and cocky and being a maximalist. It's about working with other stuff. So I think that's really important. So like. Anyway, scaling scaling utility out across the space, I think, is really really important. Um, I'm excited. We've been talking to a lot recently about to Stacks, who's building a, a, like all sorts of things on top of Bitcoin, and it's not a layer two, um, but it's really interesting what they're trying to achieve. So, I mean, there's a lot of really interesting stuff out there. So, but I'm gonna stay away from more specifics. It gets me in trouble. But I'm just interested <laughs> in in 
in projects that are looking to like advance the space from a utility perspective? Um, I am surprised, you know, you, you said there's good numbers there from Monero. I am a little surprised because, you know, I do feel like they're in the Monero community. There is, uh, you know, because it's pri very privacy oriented, it's kind of got this, these cypherpunk ideals. Obviously there's people out there memeing. I'm out there, right? I I'm talking about it, but I do feel like there's uh Monero community, if any if any coin has it, it's kind of like that tip of the iceberg phenomenon because I think there's a there's a very large uh, dark part of the community that's not really out there uh, voicing it. They're just kind of lurking and waiting and waiting for adoption to happen and not really out there screaming about it at the top of their lungs. I feel like Monero more than any other coin has that attribute yeah. to it. Um, so it'd be, be great if you guys could somehow uh, figure out how to, how to figure that out. You know, what, what's going on? Uh, you know, like, you know, even on, on the dark web, right. On the use that's happening there. I mean, maybe there's, there's social indicators there, right. Of how people are actually using it in the, in, you know, in the real world per se, that'd be interesting. And I guess my, my last question, uh, for anybody that's watching this, I assume most of them are Monero people. What advice would you give to the community? Because I do feel like it's often talked about in the community. Oh, we need to do more things to get out there to, you know, promote the coin. And then there's a lot of people in the community that say, well, let's not worry about it. We're not one of those scammy projects that promote. We just we're just heads down building, building technology and and waiting for people to come when they really need to use it. What advice would you give to the community in terms of uh, becoming more social, what, what, what should be done? What could be done? Yeah, I think, you know, that tip of the iceberg kind of example you gave, that's, that's kind of exciting. That's almost like maybe like the joy of finding that community. Right. And like, how do you showcase that? Right. Cause even, even Bitcoin, right. There's no CMO. Right. But it's just kind of like, once you find it, you understand it. And, you know, you talk to the people in that community, you're like, wow, there's something, there's a lot here. I need to, I need to be a part of this. I need to learn about it. And I would say, you know, how could you showcase like that part of the community that you love the most to, to everyone else? Right. And how can you bring that up? And, you know, nothing, nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd. And so, you know, how do you, how do you kind of showcase that to people that, you know, there is this other community here that's using this, um, you know, and, it's whether it's publishing something or having just a community oriented kind of like site out there. That's all about, you know, the use cases. And, you know, I, I do like for you guys, I think it is important to understand development activity and like share almost like we have a social dominance. It's kind of like, what if you had a development dominance, like you said, and it's like, Hey, like Monero is constantly, you know, out, out punching its weight when it comes to development. Like that must mean that there's something else here that uh, like a large subset of people that are very smart are looking at. So I would say those types of things are interesting. And I, you know, the, the one tough thing about some of this stuff is people are, they are attracted to, you know, looking up to other folks that are kind of going after their dreams, going after and building stuff. And so if that's all hidden in the back, you do kind of lose the human element a little bit of, you know, Hey, I want to be a part of that. Right. And so maybe there's a more interesting way that the community could do do that and kind of showcase some of the people, whether their identity is still anonymous, you know, creating a personality um, for that person or for that community could be interesting too. Very cool. I just want to add, I said it earlier, but you know, let's, if you've been in this industry long enough, we all think that we figured it out. We figured out who crypto people are. And, and for the longest time, since when we started like Lunar Crash, it was shocking that the community size of in the individuals was kind of cycling around a few hundred thousand people up and down, up and down. And, and then until the last little while here, like the last six months, especially, we've seen this massive pickup. And so I'd say just, you know, from a marketing perspective, you might think that you know who Monero users are. Well, there's three times more people today than a month ago in the space, 300%. Right. So if that's the case, we no longer know who crypto people are. It's now everyone. And if it's everyone, we need to adjust our marketing strategies to welcome them, to make them understand they don't know a thing about Monero. They know nothing. 
they're coming into the space, they're getting lots of advice on social channels based on whoever it is they follow. And um, I'd say, you know, despite being privacy focused, just consider the fact that your audience is now three times larger. And none of those people are who you were talking to before. So I think it, it's critical to bring new people into your projects. Um, and I get it, like people want to be, you know, they want their identity to be like taken away. They don't want to talk about it. Um, but all those new people know nothing about it. So I'd say like, I, I'd, I'd work on that. I'd work on that, bringing new people into the space, into your coin, there's in your project, into, and that from a development perspective, a community one, um, but just recognize they're all new and they know very, very little. And I think that's a big, big point to focus on right here. Um, it's now about it, it, like, if, if we were working at an ad agency, this is a let's launch an awareness campaign so that they know that you exist. Um, this isn't a necessarily a transactional time. This is like, let them know Monero exists. You hit them enough. Eventually they buy Monero. Eventually they develop a Monero, but you got to hit them a lot. And, and those are all new people. So that would be my advice. All right. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, great advice. Uh, amazing product. I think it's very well made. Uh, obviously, perfect timing. You know, I think you yeah. guys, I wish you much luck. I think you guys are going to, you're going to do well. This, uh, and I, I will continue to keep an eye. Uh, where else can people follow you and find you if not just, you know, signing up on the website, other, other areas to keep, keep abreast of everything you guys are doing? Yeah, just at Lunar Crush on Twitter is probably the best place to to get the insights. You know, John's on there tweeting 80 to 5,000 times a day, depending on yep. the prices of coins. So get out there, follow us. All right, gentlemen, thanks again. Uh, cool, maybe we can man. have you on thanks. again in the future if there's uh, some uh, social explosion in Monero. We'd love that. All right, thanks. All right, cheers, my man. Take care. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.